Welcome back to this character creation tutorial. In the last video, we created a Genesis 2 character in the Studio and imported it into Unity. In this video, I would like to go through the same steps of creating Genesis 3 content in DAS and exporting it to Unity. We will talk about the pitfalls of creating Genesis 3 content and the differences between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3. Let's get started. In your Smart Content pane under Figures, select Genesis 3. Before we do anything else, we start decimating this base mesh. With Genesis 3, it is not as easy as putting all your clothes and everything together and then decimating everything at once because the decimator and Genesis 3 do not work together as well. In fact, using the decimator sometimes crushes Das Studio and sometimes simply destroys your, your base mesh and you have to start from scratch. So let's be safe and decimate everything one by one. Make sure that Genesis 3 mail is selected over here in your hierarchy and click prepare to decimate. The first difference we see between Genesis 2 and Genesis 3 is that the Genesis 3 base mesh has less triangles. Let's reduce to 20,000 and you barely notice a difference. So here we actually do not need to make a lot of adjustments. Let's have a look at our eyes to see whether everything is still in good shape. And so far it looks good. Another thing to keep in mind is make sure that you always click done once you're finished with decimating. Because if the decimator stays open and you click another item, again, there's a chance that DAS crashes or uh, your mesh gets messed up. Let's click done and let's add some clothes. In fact, the first thing we're gonna add is shoes because I found that adding shoes after decimating the mesh actually crushes DAS more often than not. So let's add some shoes and see whether we're safe. We are. Okay. Now, after we added shoes, we have to move the character up just a little bit so that it aligns with the floor, just like we talked about in the last video. Edit, figure, move to floor, and now we're aligned with our floor pl plane again. All right, let's add a shirt and some pants. Okay, so far, so good. Some hair. Again, remember, since we have Genesis 3 male selected here, our choices here are basically filtered by any hairstyle or clothing item that is specifically made for Genesis 3 male characters. Okay, now let's try decimating each of those items individually. Again, make sure that you select each item individually and not decimate the overall mesh, because otherwise things may break. Let's go to the hair. Go to decimator, prepare to decimate. Okay, let's try to reduce the hair to 10,000. Oh, that doesn't look any good. Now for this specific hairstyle, we actually need to invest quite a few more triangles and something like 45,000 might work well. Hmm, maybe 40,000. Yep, that looks okay. That's a lot for hair, but just as an example, we will use this hairstyle for now. Again, click done and select the next item. Prepare to decimate. In the pans, we can reduce those to 15, maybe 10,000, 8,000. Looks still okay. All right, done. The shirt. Let's reduce it to 8,000, and it still looks okay. into shoes. They still seem to look okay. We can zoom in and see whether it's fine in detail, but for our example here, this is just fine. Okay, so everything is decimated. The character didn't break yet, so we're good to go. All right, now let's try to fix these pants. Let's disable smoothing. And I can already tell you that we will not be successful trying to adjust those pants to the shirt. The reason is that we cannot move the shirt 
in a way that it will not overlap with the pants. Let's try to adjust the waist a little bit. Let's pull out the front. That works. Oh, something's going on here. Let's disable smoothing. Ha! Here you see smoothing actually really interferes with some of those parameters, so let's disable it every time we get the chance. And the problem is we don't have a parameter to adjust the back. So we will actually not be able to fit those two clothing items together. Our only option is to really just delete one of them, and let's try another one. Let's delete the pants. Select them here in the hierarchy. And now if I hit delete, whatever item is selected up here will be deleted. OK. Instead of selecting anything new to filter our content, let's just head over here to our smart content. And let's look for pants. The reason why I'm not selecting anything new here is because I also want to look at Genesis 2 items. So filtering for Genesis 3 does not make a lot of sense. How about we use the same pants we used for our other character, which are Urban Metro Pants Genesis 2. Okay, now something seems to be going wrong here, but that's fine. Those pants were made for Genesis 2, so then they don't really fit well. Oftentimes when you use uh, clothing for a different uh, generation of content, they will actually be really large and just really uh, just take up most of the screen space. Now what we can do here is Let's look at our pants in the inspector. Let's disable smoothing. And let's look at this item here, fit to. Click it, fit our item to Genesis 3 mail. Parent to target is fine. And now we have to tell the studio what kind of item this originally was. Now it was originally designed for Genesis 2 mail. And it is a pair of pants. Okay, this looks much better. Now that's kind of adjusted the the pants to a different type of model, and that's fine. Did a pretty good job. Now all we have to do is expand those pants just a little bit. And we're good to go. Perfect. Now, with the pants selected, let's go back into the decimator and decimate the pants separately. Maybe down to 10,000. Looks fine. Done. Okay, nothing broke. Character seems to be set up so far. Perfect. Let's save this scene as uh, Genesis 3. And let's export. into our Unity project. Again, we're looking for the same settings here as in uh, our last video, FBX 2014 binary, and we'll leave all the settings as, uh, as they are. Okay. Our character has imported to Unity, and we have our textures folder here. Now let's just look at the different settings. Everything is pretty much exactly the same as with our Genesis 2 model. Scale factor is fine. Let's have a look at the rig. Set it to humanoid. Leave optimized game object off for now. Click apply. Let's configure it. Now, one thing that is a major difference between the two models, uh, Genesis 2 and Genesis 3, is that the rig attached to this Genesis 3 model is much more complex. You can see a lot of different bones here in the face of the character, which means, in theory, if you want to animate the character later on, you have much more control over uh, facial expressions and so on. Also, the naming of all these different bones is different to Genesis 2. So any animation that you use with Genesis 2 
might not be as easily compatible to Genesis 3 because all these different bones are named in a slightly different way. But nonetheless, the character comes with a full mesh and the full rig, all the textures and everything applied. So still we have a really convenient way of getting content into Unity. Let's click OK for now, done. And let's work with the character in our scene. All right, let's move it over a little bit. Okay, now let's look at the materials. Again, they're all fairly shiny because the smoothness comes in at 0.5. So we can make all those changes again as we did with the last character. For the face, legs. And arms. Again, you see that the mapping is actually different because we have legs and arms separately, whereas in Genesis 2 we had only limbs. Okay, now let's have a look at those eyes. They look weird. And that is something that's very common for DAS 3D models. And that is there is additional materials here for things like eye moisture. Now, that's something we might not really need here in, in Unity. So the best thing we can do is just make sure that this eye moisture is not rendered. What are our options for this? Well, first of all, we can take this material, click on the color picker here in Albedo, and just reduce the transparency of the material. In order to also get rid of any uh, reflections, any specular highlights and things like that, let's set the uh, rendering mode to fade. And already you can see the eyes look much clearer. Now, this might still not be perfect because sometimes there's two different materials here. In this case, we really only have eye moisture. Sometimes there's tears or other materials. So always make sure that anything that is uh, related to the eyes, but not the actual eye texture is uh, set to uh, transparent or is, is set uh, with the alpha channel to zero and the rendering mode to fade so that we cannot see them. All right, let's fix the eyelashes. Uh, in this case, there's actually no texture in here. So what we can do is look in our folder here and see whether we have anything related to our eyelashes here. Right, Eddie lashes. And we can change the alpha source from grayscale, alpha transparency, and let's also reduce the resolution to 512 because we don't wanna use such a large, large texture for something as small and tiny as the eyelashes. All right, let's go back in, let's apply our texture to the albedo map, and you can see, you can see the eyelashes. Let's change our rendering mode to fade, and we're good to go. Fantastic. You can already see there's some issue here with uh, some triangles here in the, in the eye. This could be fixed if we go back into DAS and uh, change the weight of the the eyes of the irises and so on to give it just a little bit more detail. I just should fix those issues. Um, we can we can do that. You can do that on your own later on. I will not go back now, um, spend the time, but that's sort of the small tweaking that you can do to perfect your character, make sure everything looks, looks perfect. All right, let's tackle the hair. Now here we have um, the material. Let's reduce the smoothness. And we see that we have this uh, brown hair. And we also have a transparency texture. And we can change the settings here to uh, alpha source from grayscale, alpha transparency, and apply. All right. Let's drop this in. This already looks much better. Let's change to fade. And uh, yeah, okay, not too bad. Again, as I mentioned in the last video, there is really not a, a good way to make all of the hair coming out of Dust 3D or other tools to look fantastic in Unity. 
Uh, we can try different shaders and everything, but um, we will do that in a different video. But out of the box, just set, uh, changing some settings here, this is pretty much what we will get. We can drop the, um, the actual texture into the detail albedo, and we will give it more color and a bit more depth, and that actually looks okay. That's actually a pretty good hairstyle, and uh, the general rule of thumb is the shorter the hair, uh, the easier it is for you to import. Here you can see the longer hair already has some transparency issues. Um, if you have uh, female uh, hairstyles that are really long, you know, long flowing hair, you will have a lot of trouble getting those to look nice. So one of the suggestions is that limit yourself to shorter hair most of the time and maybe find one or two, maybe three different hairstyles that are a bit longer that you can also get to look nicely. One issue we see here is that the uh, hairstyle was actually too large for Unity to import. You can see the, the warning down here. The mesh has more than 65,534 vertices, which means Unity is putting it up into two. That is fine for us right now. What we could do uh, is go back into DAS and um, decimate the hair just a little bit more to see how low we can go before we actually really mess up the hair too much. And hopefully this will reduce these two shapes, uh, these two parts of the mesh into one. All right. So to summarize, we have two characters here on the right side, Genesis 3, on the left side, Genesis 2. Difference being is that the overall, the Genesis 3 model is a bit more detailed, both in terms of its uh, rig attached, so the, the different bones, and also um, when looking at the Das 3D website, the explanation is that overall you have more control over the different parts of the body, the textures are more, have a higher resolution on the, for the skin and for the body. So there's a couple of advantages to use Genesis 3 over Genesis 2. However, there is a good number of decent models in the Genesis 2 generation for DAS 3D, so I think both are viable options. And if you're not going too crazy on animations, then the more simple rig is actually easier to work with sometimes for Genesis 2. So they're both viable, and um, I think the only big problem really with using any of your DAS content is getting hair to look nice. And if you're a bit careful with importing Genesis 3, and not breaking the character through the decimator, then it should be good to go. In the next video, I will briefly talk about importing morphs and blend shapes into Unity from DAS. Thanks for watching.